knowledge of the road still applies now because often you see light locomotives going on the veil and they're, they're learning the road still, aren't they? That's it. So what, what's that for? Is that so they know when to expect a signal or a gradient and things like well, that? Well, the signalling well, pattern has exactly changed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah well, the signalling now, of course, yeah. is... Uh, but it's not like taking a bus on the M6, oh, is it, or the M4? No. You've got to. Oh no, it's, it's entirely to different to what it was. No, you have to it's learn. It's more sophisticated now. Mm. You have to learn the road and sign yes, for it. Yes. But what it, what what I'm trying to get at, what is learning the road? Is it knowing, you know, where the speed restrictions are, the signals, this kind of thing? Well, speed, you know, yeah. speed restriction can be put on and off at any given time. There can be temporary ones. Yes, yes. yes and yes. but there are permanent restrictions. Yes, yes. For instance, there's a 10 mile an hour long journey to Barry yes. Island. Yes. So you have to know all that. It's no good coming down here saying, "Why oh, where Barry Island is," and go racing round the bend. That's that's not on. So, so you have to a know. A driver who didn't know the road couldn't just all of a sudden go up through Central oh, Wales, for example. No way. If he did have to go, if it had to be done, that he had to work a train there, he had no knowledge of the road, then he'd have to have the services of a. In those days, we called it a pilot conductor. He'd have to have another driver who has knowledge of the road. It sometimes happens. That uh, it happened to me once in uh, Birmingham. Now I had um, sorry, don't no, no, I better cut that out. One Birmingham. Oh, I don't worry. Yeah, I forgot where we were. Now. But we went into what well, must have been Salem. Yeah. Yes, it was Shrewsbury. It was in Coatnail. It was Shrewsbury because the the word came to us that we have to take our local um, into this North Wales line to assist a train that had got stuck. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, they were going to provide uh, a pilotman, a conductor, to pilot, because I didn't know the road, never worked up there in my life. So anyway, I um, waited and this man came and I offered him the seat. No, he didn't know that traction. So I had to drive yeah. under his instruction. See, he was telling me, slow down your driver, or, yeah. you yeah. know. Uh, obviously, the signals were fairly obvious. So I went and we got there. And we got behind this train and we banked it up over the top and uh, down into this um, this station and having got there now uh, put the train got the train into the loop the train is there and we're behind and uh, we all went to the signal box and obviously we had to go to the signal box because we got to get back yeah so, so we all went so there was the driver and fireman off the train there was myself and my uh, second man i'm talking diesel days now and uh, my second man, and there was the guards, and they're all up there. And when I arrived, being the last one to arrive, the signalman said to me, "Oh, you wanted on the phone?" Oh, right. So he said, uh, and there was all silence there. So I picked up the phone, and the voice said to me, "Do you know that local is not allowed on really? that track?" I said, "Well, it's no good blaming me." I said, "I've never been up before. I don't know the road, so I know nothing about it." And I said, the man who does know the road doesn't know the traction, so he has no knowledge of it either. So I said to him, you find the man who ordered this local up here, and I suspect it was you, I said, so you blame him. <laughs> and he put the phone down, and <laughs> that was the end of the question. But I had news for him, yeah. because we got back safe anyway. <laughs> but he wasn't, uh, that local wasn't allowed up there. But that was the kind of thing that used to happen. So. Yeah. So well, thanks for that. Well, give it, see how it all works out. You know, I mean, I think it's going to be good. I mean, you know, well, on, the, uh, on the tape. It's obviously it's got the edits you're doing like, you know. Yeah, and, and you know, what I'll do, I mean, have you guys got video recorders at home? Yes, and things we like have, that? yeah. They have a copy if you want? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, just uh, in, uh, in passing, this depot before, when it was relinquished by the... Uh, yes. ...became a depot for the MGR, medical on trains. I can remember seeing them in yeah, here about right. well, 20 odd years ago. They yeah. only emptied a stable here, but they went back and forth to the quarries, permanently coupled to a locomotive. Oh, really? Yeah. So they went from um, <coughs> the quarry to the power station, in this case, Abathor, yeah. emptied, turned around, and went straight back up again. That's how they were. They were uh, uh, 28 wagons, but they increased that to 32. I can remember them going down, you used to go right down past the uh, skill centre, didn't they? That's right, that yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And, and just finally, really, perhaps, I mean, we know, but I mean, the reason Barry's scrapyard was the last was, was it because Di Woodham scrapped the wagons first and he was left Well, no, he used the wagons as an, ex ex as an excuse to, to retain the local boys, am I right? Until well, yes, no, he, he actually didn't in increase his workforce. 
No, I mean, no, he was no. having uh, these wagons in on a regular basis yeah. and he was burning them up. But of course, he saw the future by these uh, locals, which he was doing. He realized there was a great interest in it and that people were wanting to buy yes. them. And so he never, he never had any, it. no security, yeah. no nothing. The men were burning up the wagons and he only cut up a local when there were no exactly. wagons. He was the same so nobody one. stood off work. No. no. And these locals were here and... Uh, he was a very shrewd businessman. He? he was. And, uh, so he did realize that he was left with them. I mean, it wasn't just an well, accident. He realized I mean, we, people we, were coming we, to ask for this them. This barrier is internationally known now. It is, oh yeah. So as, as Len was saying, he only burned a locomotive when he had no wagons yes. to, to do. Whereas all the other guys all around the rest of the UK, just well, as soon as he yes, got to scrap them, didn't That they? big yeah. chap, Vic Berry at Leicester, he, he, as he received them, he, cut, he burns them up. Well, the same thing happened at Newport, didn't it? Newport, yes. Was it yeah. Cashmore than Newport? Cashmore, Cashmore that's at right. Newport, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Vic Berry at Leicester. Yeah. Um, somebody up in uh, North Rotherham, I forget who it was there. But, um, no. Without Guy Woodham, I, I, don't, I don't think the Preservation Society would have survived. Oh, no. Yeah. I'm sure he wouldn't. That is... Uh, yes, he, he was a saviour that people didn't realise, you yeah. know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for that, gentlemen. That's right. uh, I'll put it now because I want to get some shots of the locals. Yes, and, yes. Uh, you know, I'll, I want to decide what to do with I'll let you have copies first. I'll just have a look and see what, what, what mess we've made of it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it's a trial run anyway. Yeah, yeah, thank you very yeah, much. Thank yeah. you very much.
Alright, pull the chain. Pull the chain on the car.